So then, then you you import the necessary. Uh, that's you need to be in, uh, import your you you install your Java open layer uh, open layer JavaScript libraries with the, your Node.js server, and then then you can import the necessary classes and functions that you need to the to the your features or the your functionality. I will show you how it is when I did start the development. So here. So you see that we, what we need to, to install, uh, we need to install the your Node.js. This is the server. We start as like server, like your Tomcat server, act like Java, 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 VM, Java virtual machines for the Angular and TypeScript based because this is the browser based portable applications. So we don't need to do like, like the big, big server setups in for Java, even though Groovy, even though Tomcat server. So the Node.js is handle all things as a server and it's, it's really integrated with the uh, TypeScript and in Angular and means the browser based and the development framework, GUI framework. So you need to be installed the uh, Node.js server as a runtime environment in your local machines. Uh, when you try to deploy the application to the client machines, a thousands of machine, and each of the machine need to be installed the uh, Node.js. You need to be take care this one. So that's why I said in the last screencast, when you are as a, as a full stack developer, as all depending on which company size you have it, that means you need to be plan. Okay. If you, if you are full stack developer, that means you are responsible into the your company need, or you are responsible to get this and uh, develop an application to the in the productions, even though test environments, even then all release environments. That means when you implication implementation development is done to the locally and you have to be install this application to the client machine then that means the client machine you need to be installed the your runtime that means you need to be installed there uh, your node.js and then run the your 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 your, your tar files means if you have a docker container build the docker image and deploy the docker there and run the docker image to the respective machines and it's your application run necessary necessary configurations and then do the application and build the, your, your, your domain your domain application or your, your server, your web applications. Provide required libraries to the Angular. So Node.js has an, uh, the, to run the Angular projects. That means it's, 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 a, it's, 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 a, it's a runtime environment for Angular. It's a fit really fit with the Node.js. So you need to be Install the Node.js, go to the this web page and try to download and install the Node.js. It is very simple to install it. I already did it, I will show you how it is done. And then you need to be CLI, Angular CLI, then PMP to the your, your package management, install the Angular CLI. When you this is the commands you need to install. When you and Node.js install, just run this command uh, npm install g uh, g for angular cli and then you can put it there and uh, at the rate of the what version you try to install the angular cli so that's the basic uh, basic uh, cli commands mm, uh, when you start the projects i will show you so this is the commands to create your new projects uh, complete in new so this is uh, when you try to you give it to the ng and then the new and the project name and then this it's 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 downloading all necessary modules or dependencies into the your project and you get the really 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 good uh, good project structures and then after that you can import this project to the to the your respective ide maybe for my case i use a visual studio code with that ide even then the webstorm from the J, jbrain is a good tools even though other other editing tools you can use also that those things but but for my case Visual Studio Code is a very, really good tool for, for Angular and TypeScript based development. So MPI, you need to be careful. This is the most important commands. When you have a you have a application is created, now you, you integrate this and import the application to the Visual Studio Code and run this command means, please refresh or in, input all the dependency yeah. If even though it is already there, but even try to again to run this dependency because if you run this dependency, that means is all dependencies checked, is, is rightly checked what they need it, and you run the applications. So install all dependencies, those are defined into the packages. So I will show you when you need a new dependency and just you need to input there and then again to npmi to, to install this, this dependency into the into the into the applications. 
So you can build a, a TypeScript class like ng ng by generator. Even though you can generate, write down long, but in shortly key keynote key yeah, shorthand is like g, and then you build a class, and then you give you the class name. It's create the TypeScript class. Even though you can create service, and then service name, and then the components, and then when you treat the components, it's create automatically four files like TypeScript files and then HTML file, CSS, or depending which selection you need to do, do or SCSS files. SME is like CSS and SCSS, this is the more extension. And then you can build the enums and then enum generator and the interface generator as, as like, as like this is the concept like, as like the object oriented programming as like Java or C, C sharp or C++ or even though in Python is like same things. So it's the really, really optimum to build just like automatically build your TypeScript file and build your start development plan. That's I need to be show you what when I start the development. So I did the so that means I run the the project created and then and then now I import the projects and this you see the project structure I put it here project here the geospatials and this is the node modules. Be careful. This is the node module modules when you run the application run this one then it's automatically if you if you have a new dependency here then if you run the npmi that means all the dependency are imported here as as a, as a packet node modules and you can then you can access this node module to the application the import the applications this so even because when something happens maybe your dependency doesn't work properly, then the might idea to, to get it okay, delete the node modules from the from the your project structure and then run the NPM NPMI, then it's automatically create a new node modules into the your project structure and then you have a really clean dependency and clean dependency injections. Then you can your application should go away this way. So that means sometimes in the enterprise application there's a lot of dependencies to inject it. And some 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 applications some sometimes crack or the need a different version of the dependency. Then normally in the professional life we delete the node modules and 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 run the and, and insert the new 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 library into the package.json files. And then this is the package.json file and npmi started. And then this is all the information is stored there. The package package.log.json files. So that means. If you if you delete this with these files and when you have a new libraries into here and you, you run the npmi that means it automatically this file is created as a as a as a, as a rep files and updated this one so this is to see the complete structure it's automatically like grid git and e2e and nz modules and apps and src folders and the non necessary configuration and necessary json files and the foxy files the most important part because the foxy files is the communication between the all the microservices i will show you this foxy when, when the foxy defined so here is the uh, the when i try to id integrate the ide for the visual studio code project structure when you input the same projects into the cc the there is a possi you see the the application folder, the all necessary proxy folder, the CISO asset folder and service folder. And then this is, this is a application name and version number script. And you need to be really careful this part to understand. So you see the script and ZNZ and start. So that means you, you, you write it here, the NZ server. Normally it was when you are default coming NZ serve. And then it's, that means when npm is start or ng sub, you write in you're writing your terminals and it's, it's running with your default port now, maybe 4200. And if you change to configure to change different port because maybe 4200 is used in another, in, another, in another process, but you can change it here like you can minus minus port and then give it to your 4404. And then you can set a proxy config and proxy JSON file because you need to to configure the your all communications. And then when the, that means when the application started, when you say np npm start, that means application start from the npm behind the scene. It start in the server and port number with that one and read the all the configuration file from the proxy.json and communicate the services. You see the 
and then start the services and build the data or do the operation what you need to do.